Good morning. Happy Easter. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, and an angel of the Lord came from heaven. Going to the tomb, the angel rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. Just as he said, go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. Jesus is risen today. Welcome to worship, everyone. Welcome. My name is Wendy Russell, and I'm happy to see everyone here. Be sure to check in on Facebook right now if you're joining us online. We also ask that you lift up your prayer requests in the comments section, and we will get them in when we do our prayer time. Is anyone here for the first time today? We have something special that we would like to give our first-time guests. If you're here for the first time, just raise your hand. Okay. Take a look in your bulletin um, to see our announcements and everything that is going on in the life of the church. There's so much happening here and we really want you to be a part. So let's join together by raising our voices in our call to worship and then going right into singing, The Lord is Risen Today. Please stand and join me in the call to worship.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ our Lord has risen from the grave to bring salvation. He has risen indeed. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Earth and heaven chorus say, hallelujah. Raise your voice and triumphs high, hallelujah. 
We come now to a time of prayer. And as always is our tradition in the life of the church, I like to ask, and if anyone has prayer requests for this morning, the joys and the concerns in our lives. Alan. We lift up prayers for moisture on this Easter Sunday. Okay. Okay, continued prayers for Michelle Schultz. We lift up allergies and ongoing allergy season. Can anyone relate? Are there any other prayer requests that we have? Yeah. Yes, Miriam. We lift up Miriam in prayer for health concerns. Others. Yes, we continue in prayer for all of the fires, whether they are still raging or, or contained throughout New Mexico. We pray for those who have lost their homes, and we also pray for those who are those special people in our communities who run toward the danger to help. Yeah. We lift up prayers for peace on earth in the midst of such strife and conflict. Okay. Yes. York family, we are so glad that you're here. Welcome, and welcome to everybody. <clears throat> we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for families and folks being able to come together on Easter. Are there any others before we go to God in prayer? Yes. We lift up prayers for Rachel's friend, Lupe. Why don't we go to God in prayer? And as always, let's start off with a moment of just silent prayer. A prayer of thanksgiving or a prayer of curiosity, a prayer of tension. Let us pray. Good morning, Lord, on this beautiful, wonderful Easter Sunday that you have created. Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity to come together as your people in worship, lifting up praises, joining our voices together in song, and joining our hearts together in prayer. We lift up to you today, Lord, all that we have presented before you out loud together so we can hear and be in prayer for each other, and then all of those prayer requests that we've left deep within our own hearts. Lord, hear our prayers. On this today, the celebration, the remembrance of your son rising out of the tomb and emptying the tomb. Lord, continue to guide us. Help us understand your ways in the ways that we have fallen away. Lord, help us be mended back together with your help, with your guidance, with our sisters and brothers in Christ. We lift up to you, Lord, prayers for health, prayers for comfort, prayers for peace, peace in our own hearts and peace all throughout this world, Lord. May your hand intervene in the conflict. May leaders' hearts be changed to turn to you. Lord, as we ask, as we pray, as we listen for you, we also remember the prayer on this day that, that your son taught the disciples. A prayer that has echoed through generation after generation of belief to this very moment. A prayer that we get to say that helps us turn inward and outward and upward to you. We always and evermore remember that you are indeed our Father 
who art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let's let the praise continue. Please rise as you are able, and let's sing together, Up from the Grave He Arose. The ushers will be coming forward to collect this morning's offering. Will you please join me in prayer? Gracious God and risen Lord, how beautiful it is to gather in this space and proclaim that the Lord has risen indeed. We give our tithes and our offerings this morning, acknowledging the abundance of our lives because of an empty tomb. Continue to bless our lives. May we focus on you and all the work that you have for us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The cross of Calvary shows just how far God was willing to go to reach the world with his love. And it shows how far Jesus was willing to go for the redemption of all. Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and now sits at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the living God, the great I am. This is Jesus, the holy Lamb of God. This is Calvary's love.
please stand and sing our doxology. So after Jesus was crucified, he was taken down and placed into a tomb by a faithful man named Joseph of Arimathea. There were faithful onlookers, women among them named Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and Salome. After the death of Jesus, these women went and prepared spices and ointments for the body. Where we begin our passage today is right after Sabbath, the first day of the week. Hear these words telling of the story of the resurrection. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words, they they seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we can say, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me one more time? God, thank you again for your opportunity to study, to learn, and do my best to try and live out your life-giving word. May the meditations of my heart and all of our hearts upon your word, may they be worthy, Lord. Let me be careful to give you all of the glory. Amen. All of the resurrection stories differ in some way. They all pick up on important elements and tell the story a slightly different way. But one thing they all have in common is elements of failure and success on the part of the disciples. The disciples all have an element of failure to success leading up to Jesus' death and then also afterward. And we're going to look at a couple of these today and see how that might relate to us on this Easter Sunday. Whether it's the women running away from the tomb, scared and amazed and telling nobody, that's Mark's version of the gospel of the resurrection, or some of the disciples not believing the women in the other gospels like we just read. In the end, they all come to believe and they tell others about it. I mean, that's how we get to today celebrating Resurrection Easter Sunday, right? They started talking. It's an empty tomb that we observe today. And an empty tomb is not proof of a resurrection alone, right? It simply means a tomb is empty. Could it be that the suffering and humiliation continued for Jesus and the the disciples, and, and that's what the women saw first? Those are the eyes that they saw through when they first came upon that tomb? Had somebody stolen the body and robbed the tomb? When they saw the tomb, they were perplexed, which is a very specific word here. It means more than just something like they were puzzled or maybe they were a little confused. It means that they were at a loss 
mentally, spiritually. They couldn't comprehend the tomb being empty. Now, thankfully, we have the two men in dazzling clothes, which should, which should tell us that these were angels who appeared, God's messengers. They fill in the blanks for the women. So the first lesson in faith from failure to success comes with the women. This is a lesson of faith for the women. The women, they bring spices to anoint a dead body. Think about that for a second. <laughs> they bring spices to anoint a dead body. They weren't there to greet and celebrate a risen Lord. Probably, I mean, seeing still bleary because of crying and anguish. They took upon their duty to go to the tomb to try and show whatever nurture and care they could for someone that they cared about deeply. They just couldn't see how it might be possible. The angels reminded them of Jesus' words and perhaps they had indeed forgotten them through the events that unfolded on that Good Friday, as we call it now. Maybe seeing what had been done to Jesus, they said to themselves, how could anyone come back from that? Even our Messiah. So they failed in that aspect. When they encounter the angels, they do have a choice. Do we believe them? Well, yes, they do. They do believe. And then they go and tell. Success. We'll be talking a little bit more. That there's no need for the spices anymore. There really was no need to seek the living among the dead. Their failure turns into success because they run off to tell the good news to the other disciples. And this can teach us on a day like today, don't miss your opportunity to drop your preconceived notions of what's going on around you because you can come face to face with the divine in this world. They brought their preconceived notions in the form of spices and ointments to anoint a dead body. But then they go off and tell as we should do as well. Now the other disciples, they face a struggle in their faith as well. They're in the same boat as the women. They witnessed the death and then they left. Maybe they hid in Jerusalem for a while. Maybe they went on to Galilee holding out hope that they would indeed see Jesus again. But they didn't pass their first test of faith either after Jesus' resurrection. The other disciples are told this amazing story. And despite all of the amazing things that they had seen and experienced. I mean, think about what they had seen and experienced. Bread turning into a feast for multitudes. Stormy waters being calmed. Miracles of healing. They even heard about or saw with their own eyes Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. But they can't seem to believe this either at first. And that's where we leave the other disciples today. Except for Peter. Be like Peter in this story. Peter was amazed and intrigued, so he goes to the tomb to see for himself. The other disciples are going to have their opportunities to believe, and they'll eventually see the risen Jesus. And we'll be talking about that more next week. We're going to talk about a, a group of disciples who had to see to believe. Don't worry, they eventually experience success in their faith. But to wrap it up, the angels ask all of us a very important question on this Resurrection Sunday. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Where is your faith on this Easter Sunday? Where are you looking for the living among the dead because you're struggling to fully believe in God's promises and understand them? Is the dead Jesus the Jesus that we're supposed to be looking for? Well, no. We're looking for the whole story, which includes a resurrection. We have the story right in front of us. On this Easter Sunday, look for resurrection in your life because of the Savior's resurrection. Peer into the empty tombs in your life and see that there's nothing of worth there. Christ is out of the tomb. Christ is on the move waiting to meet with you. He's got faithful voices all around you telling you to go and see. Jesus died and rose again so that we don't have to go looking for the living among the dead. We have salvation from the dead and salvation from the things that only bring death and lead to death. 
If we go searching for the living among the dead, yeah, we're only going to find the dead. So let us model ourselves after the women in Luke who couldn't wait to go and tell of the Savior. No matter what the reception is that we might get, you will encounter people who will think of your faithful message as an idle tale like those disciples did at first. And that's okay because you plant seeds for hope and living it by encountering others, even if they don't feel like the seed has been planted. We need a message of real hope in this world now more than ever. Amen? Amen. And it comes through you. Amen? Amen? Your resurrection story, your resurrection message of a risen Savior. Surround yourself with the living and the positive, faithful people in this world because it will help you encounter those who are struggling in their faith, those who don't have faith at all that the Lord is risen, that he is risen indeed. Come to our Friday night game night this this Friday at 6 and encounter people who are there for you, who are there with you, who will be there for you. Connect with people who struggle with you and help you grow in faith. Join Bible studies, go to fellowship events, help serve others through our bag-in-hand food pantry. Worship together continually. You'll be strengthened by it. Start right after worship as, as uh, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> as Mr. Lear's lifted up by joining our fellowship time in the chapel. Gain the confidence that you need to continue to seek the living among the living, not the dead. Seek the Savior among the living because he's no longer in the tomb. And so all I can say after that is happy Easter. Let's live. He is risen indeed. Let's live like people of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Let us rise one more time as we are able and sing together. He lives.
If you're not familiar with it, one of our traditions in worship is that after receiving the benediction, we sit and we listen to the postlude, and during the postlude, we ponder the message and, and all that's taken place in worship today and see how we're going to walk out of here changed and ready to face our week. So receive this benediction. Go forth from this place, you blessed people of the resurrection. Go and turn every failure into a success in your faith. Go forth boldly like the women from the tomb and proclaim the good news to everyone you encounter. Go in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. After that postlude, who's ready to jump back out into this world on this Easter? One more announcement. These Easter lilies and these orchids up here, if you would like to come and take one, they are a gift from St. John's, and so please feel free, and now go in peace. <laughs>